Here's a nice little Lafayette guitar amplifier. As you can see, it's still rather dusty. Here's a look at the top of this unit. It's got two inputs, tone control, volume control, on-off switch, and I guess PL stands for pilot light. And here's the back of the unit. I'm going to hook this up to my isolation transformer and variac and bring up the power on this slowly and we'll find out how good a shape this little amplifier is in. Okay, here's the Lafayette amp and it's on and what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn power up on this slowly. Turn on the unit. And you can see the current over here. I've got it on the lowest scale. Now that's about 60 volts. And I think I'm seeing the lamp light a little bit on the amplifier. There's 70. Oh, and what's going on now? I hear a little bit of hum. That means the tubes are beginning to conduct. Okay. 90 volts, 100, hundred and twenty volts, and the current looks good. I'm going to put that on 10 times scale. Yeah, current looks good. Okay, we can hear a hum on this thing. Ugh. And very scratchy. Ugh. So this thing, volume control has really dried out. But it functions. Both of them are scratchy and noisy. Some of that noise could be from a tube. Well, doesn't seem like it's microphonics. Could be though. Well, it's time to take a look at the inside of this thing. Here's a look at the inside. And of course we're going to take this unit apart. Looks like a fairly good speaker. Don't see much information on it though. And looking at the board, doesn't look like it suffered too much from any heat stress, so that's really good news. There's the two inputs, just regular plugs for uh, guitar. Transformer looks like it's in 
really good shape. Now here it is out of the box. Speaker is still hooked up. And you can see the power transformer, the filters, and the audio transformer. That audio transformer looks to be pretty substantial, so this should uh, put out some pretty good quality sound. And I'll get around to replacing those filter caps. Good size power transformer also. And in the lower right, those two black round cylinders, those are the diodes. Here's a closer look at the board. It looks like it's brand new. Looks like there's a little crack on the center capacitor there, but it may be all right. We'll find out. Okay, here's one of the tubes. That was the one all the way to the left in the last picture. A 6AR5. And the other two remaining tubes are 6AV6s. I am applying some WD-40 to the media that holds the carbon run. These controls have shrunk so much that the wiper doesn't make contact sometimes. They're not dirty, they just shrunk and the WD-40 puts the petroleum back into the media and allows them to swell back to their original size. And I have put on a little bit more than what I usually do because you can see how this is really soaking it up. and the amplifier is on right now. I had done this earlier and it's, oh, I'd say about 10 minutes time has passed. That's the tone. Here's the volume. That's quite a difference. After the tone and volume control, and while I'm waiting for them to resize themselves back to original, I went ahead and replaced the electrolytic capacitors. And notice the configuration of the left two capacitors. The positive is tortoise on the leftmost capacitor and the negative is tortoise in the middle capacitor. That's a voltage doubler power supply. And I do have a video on voltage doublers. Okay, it's all done. No scratching at all. There's the tone control that about halfway.
this unit does sound better than what this headset can pick up. But it is a nice little guitar amplifier and I may use it on my workbench as a signal tracer. May make a probe for it for signal tracing RF and I don't have to do anything for audio frequency. Thanks for watching.